Bienvenue à tous. Welcome to Reporters Plus here on France 24. I'm Mark Owen. In this special edition, the women in France who were lured into jihadi terrorism. Our story starts with the women who attempted to detonate a car bomb near Notre Dame Cathedral. They were arrested after attacking police in the south of Paris. Their road to terror looks all too familiar. Contact with French jihadists in Syria, call to marry and provide children to join the jihad, being born into a network of terror. What drives someone born and raised in France to take such a route is a subject of much soul-searching. But it's a phenomenon that we're living with today. France Cat reporter Romeo Longrois has been piecing together how these women came to be part of this network and its links to other atrocities carried out on French soil, notably the murder of two police officers at their home in the Paris suburbs and the chilling, brutal murder of a priest in his 80s at a Catholic mass in northern France. An underground, paranoid world. From this office, we came into contact with the French women who sympathise with Daesh, the so-called Islamic State. May Allah bless you. Sweetheart, Hijra is for women too. She'll marry and have children. The children will enlarge the Ummah. They'll be the future Mujahideen. They'll spread the word of Allah Azawajallah. Women who can't do that are advised to seek Isti Shahid in France. September 2016, and a first for France, a thwarted terrorist attack in which all the suspects are female. Sur ces images, l'une d'elles est arrêtée. Mais Inès Madani, la plus jeune, sort un couteau et s'attaque à un policier. Inès Madani est la fille du propriétaire de cette voiture abandonnée dimanche dernier, à 200 mètres de Notre-Dame, avec à son bord six bonbonnes de gaz et trois bouteilles de carburant. The would-be car bomb was never detonated. Toutes les rues de la ville qui sont bouclées, très difficile d'accéder dans le quartier de la gare, près de l'avenue Jean Moulin, où les trois arrestations ont eu lieu. Three days later, Ignace Madani and her accomplices were arrested at this roundabout in a nondescript town just south of Paris. I really think there's something fanatical about them. Before it was men, today it's women. What about tomorrow? There's no security at all. It's not right. For a long time, Daesh wouldn't allow women to carry out attacks. But according to the state prosecutor, that's changed. These young women acted this out on the orders of members of the terrorist Islamic State organization in Syria. It's proof they want to turn women into fighters. They meet and set out their plans online. At the time of Monsieur Molan's words, France 24 had already been investigating women's role in jihadism for months. Women who call themselves the Sisters of Akida. We started on the internet, a goldmine of information and advice. Extremist propaganda, recruiters' profiles, even manuals for aspiring terrorists. It's a community hostile to the media. So to explore it, two of our researchers pretended to be sympathizers. They created fake Facebook profiles and managed to enter into a network of radicalized French women and girls, alienated from society and tempted by violence. To protect their identity, our pair wore niqabs, 
just like the women they approached. With contractless mobile SIM cards and anti-geolocation software, they remained untraceable. Eighteen days after setting up their profiles, a man we'll call Abdel got in touch. Are your papers ready? Yes. Why? To prepare for Hijra. Hijra, to migrate to an Islamic country. To the jihadists, that means Iraq or Syria. Abdul's wary and controlling. He says he's French, based in Algeria, a claim we can't verify. Six days later, he tells us to continue our exchange using an encrypted app, Telegram, via which he sends us voice messages. Abdul knows that for the sisters, showing one's face to a stranger is forbidden. He wants to make sure we're not from the intelligence services or the media. Salam alaikum. Bonjour. Et toi Active rapidement ta vidéo, je vais t'expliquer ce qui se passe en fait. Et tourne un peu ton, ton PC à droite à gauche. Il fallait absolument que je te vois maintenant encore pour pouvoir continuer. Ok, ok, salam. Ok, pas de soucis, salam alaikum. Ok, salam alaikum. Abdul says he will talk to his religious brothers in Syria about us. Oui. Little later, he calls back. Et donc, euh... Et euh, il m'a dit parce qu'en fait les, les filles seules, genre c'est un peu délicat là-bas. Il a dit c'est elles seront plus libres si elles arrivent mariées. Euh, je t'aurais proposé de te marier quand même avec moi ou avec mon frère, mais vraiment pour, par entre guillemets par forme quoi, histoire que ça facilite euh, le passage. Mmh. Et je pense que le but là c'est de passer quoi, c'est d'arriver là-bas. And once in Syria, their mission is to give birth to future jihadists. Abdul gets back in touch the next day. J'ai parlé avec euh, avec les frères. Il faut absolument que tu te prépares vite. Quoi. Donc déjà, il faut que tu apprennes à partir à l'aéroport seul et d'une façon naturelle. Il faut, il faut, en fait, ce qu'il faudra que tu apprennes à faire, c'est obéir exactement au doigt à l'œil, exactement comme, euh, comme je t'ai dit de faire. D'accord Over the next few weeks, Abdul looks to build up his authority, contacting us several times. He says right now, fighting makes reaching Syria impossible. He wants us to hold tight and wait. Using Telegram, our researchers also come into contact with a well-known French jihadist, Rashid Kassim. In July 2016, he was the executioner in one of Daesh's notorious propaganda videos. Speaking via his Telegram channel from the so-called Caliphate in Syria and Iraq, he's repeatedly called for attacks on France. Qu'en est-il parmi la plus grande des adorations, c'est-à-dire le djihad, fils et bilillah Et qu'en est-il de la plus grande, des plus grandes adorations, c'est le fait d'attaquer en terre de Koufre Despite long being on their radar, Kassim has proved elusive for French intelligence. He suspects of inspiring the murder of a couple of police officers outside Paris in June 2016. as well as the killing of a priest in his church in Normandy the following month. He's also been linked to the female suspects in September's gas canister case. On his Telegram channel, he explains how to rig up a car bomb and offers advice on procuring the components. Comment se procurer beaucoup de bouteilles de gaz En fait, vous détournez la, la conversation vers le prix. En fait, le, le gars en face, il se dit pas, c'est bizarre, pourquoi il veut le temps de bouteilles de gaz Et euh, donc, euh, vu que les coffards, c'est des gros matérialistes, le gars, il sera focalisé, Inch'Allah, sur le, le prix. Kassim expresses his joy at the idea of French women becoming terrorists. J'appelle les frères à se réveiller. 
Maintenant, quand des sœurs, elles font ça, alors je dis que c'est un signal d'alerte et que ça doit réveiller, faire un électrochoc dans le, corps, le, le, le cœur des frères. Tu te rends compte Prendre un couteau, aller frapper un policier, c'est pas, pas quelque chose d'exceptionnel, ça, qu'une femme, elle fasse ça Kasim is talking about Inyas Madani, the youngest suspect in the gas canisters case. Aged just 19, this is her police file. It reads, in contact with the radical Islamist movement and likely to travel to the jihadist combat zone. In a letter written before her arrest, Madani pledged allegiance to Daesh. I, Inyas Madani, attack you in your lands in order to terrorize you. Islam will be victorious. Embrace it before it tracks you down and kills you. Madani's lawyer, Laurent Pasquet Marinas, visits her regularly in jail. His client knows about our investigation and has allowed him to talk to us. I think, from the way she behaved when they arrested her, that she wanted to get killed. She wanted to become a martyr. According to Pasqui Marinas, Madani lived in a virtual world, addicted to the internet and enraged by images of the war in Syria, ubiquitous on extremist websites. He says witnessing Muslim suffering led her down the road to radicalism. Of course, she took the wrong path, but I think it was a desire to act, to do something that motivated her. I think that's the genius of Daesh. The way they've used the internet as a weapon. They've managed to harness the desire for revolt that some young French people have. And they've molded it to lead them towards a misguided, perverted cause. Ignace Madani is in solitary confinement and faces a potential life sentence. Virginie Leblic from Belgium is a psychologist and a Muslim. Some of her patients are women tempted by extremism. What you notice is that a lot of these girls have personal problems or difficult relationships with their families. They're mentally fragile and emotionally susceptible. Self-confident people don't blow themselves up. These girls are often former cannabis smokers, lacking in self-belief and easy to manipulate. Many of them suffer from depression and see no purpose in life, so they go looking for a cause. Depressed or not, they're certainly determined. A contact on Telegram invites us to a forum called Cooking with the Sisters. But there are no recipe tips here. Just talk of Syria, Daesh and Hijra. Among those in the chat room, a woman we'll call Amina. Her avatar is a roaring lion. We pretend to be recent converts seeking guidance and ask her about the role of women in Islam. You're asking questions and I'm trying to reply as best I can. If I can't give you an answer, read up about it or talk to those who know. Because me, I know only as much as the next person. Claims of ignorance could be interpreted as a sign of modesty. But is Amina really as innocent as she seems? In her teenage voice, she leads us into her world. And it starts with Daesh propaganda songs. Al Hayat Media Center presents 
Ma calache est armée, les civils désarmés, j'élimine des Français, c'est vase qu'il faut remercier, ceinture c'est quatre branchés, dans une foule déclenchée, j'explose des Français, c'est vase qu'il faut remercier, les musulmans s'élancent, s'explosent. C'est de la bande. Isn't it great? I listen to it on repeat. If you want to talk about it, no worries, I'm here. We're sisters of God. We have to help each other because no one else is going to help us. We know little about Amina and never meet her. But she's willing to share her concept of violence and death. Pray so that Allah blinds our enemies and grants us martyrdom. You have to put your trust in Allah. You've only just come into the religion, so some things might seem strange to you, like fear of death, but you shouldn't be scared of death. Allah gives life and Allah takes it away. It's our last exchange. After this, Amina disappears into cyberspace. Is she deluded? Dangerous? Has she been arrested? One thing's for sure. For some young French women, the virtual world of jihad has spilled over into reality. In August 2014, anti-terrorist police arrested several teenagers who discussed staging a firearms attack on a Jewish neighborhood in the southeastern city of Lyon. 19-year-old Iman was one of them. She grew up in a working-class neighborhood, part of a large family, with Muslim and Christian grandparents. At 17, she began wearing the veil and tumbled into the ideology of Daesh. Two years on, she's repentant and agrees to talk to us. I knew what I was doing was serious, but at the same time, I told myself, it's for God, so why are you scared? I said to myself, I wasn't being a good Muslim if I was scared, so I told myself not to be frightened. Iman says it all started when she fell under the spell of a 15-year-old she met online. We'll call her Camille. She lived hundreds of kilometers away. And according to Iman, the pair never met in real life. We met on Facebook and exchanged numbers. We chatted for six months. I really liked her. It was different from my friends in real life. Because we were so far away from each other, it meant we could talk about everything. I don't know whether I can say it was she who indoctrinated me. I don't know how to describe it. I'd never really thought about dying. It was Camille who gave me ideas like that, little by little. I began hating life and wanting to become a martyr. Dying a martyr meant we could go to paradise with 70 people we knew, being able to take my whole family to paradise too. I started to become obsessed with the idea. The two young girls planned to steal Camille's father's hunting rifles and launch an attack. That was it, to take the weapons and go kill people. I agreed to carry out a suicide mission two days before I was arrested. That arrest is what saved my life. Investigators say the two young women were in contact with French jihadists in Syria who urged them towards violence. Daesh may be losing ground in Iraq and Syria, but not on the internet. Our correspondence with Abdul the recruiter has now lasted four months. OK, OK, salam. OK, pas de souci, salam alaikum. Despite the intensifying fighting, he says he's found a way for us to reach the so-called caliphate. Ah oui, j'ai oublié de te demander, t'es sportif ou pas Euh, oui. Tu peux courir, franchir des obstacles Ouais, ouais, y'a pas de souci, oui. D'accord, parce qu'à un moment donné, y'aura un chemin, ce sera assez physique, quoi. T'as intérêt à... 
à être, à être en forme. Abdul says the journey is imminent and prepares us for life under Daesh rule. Quand tu vas arriver là-bas, il y a beaucoup de pratiques religieuses qui vont te surprendre en fait. Parce qu'elles n'existent plus dans le monde occidental. Dans le monde arabe. Euh... Par exemple. Le fait, par exemple, c'est possible qu'un beau jour tu te balades dans, dans la rue et qu'on bala balance quelqu'un de dessus d'un immeuble. Oh. Un homosexuel. Oh. Ben, c'est un homosexuel, tu vois. Il peut faire ça ben, C'est pas qu'ils peuvent ou ils peuvent pas. En fait, ce qu'ils font, ces gens, c'est qu'ils apprennent la, la religion dans l'art en latin et qu'ils l'appliquent, tu vois. Around 800 French citizens, one third of them women, have abandoned their families to join jihadist groups in Iraq and Syria. It's a phenomenon that comes from across France, from big cities to the countryside, even little villages like this one in the Bordeaux wine region. One of the first French women to make the journey, Anissa, grew up here. She left age 22 in November 2013, two years before the Paris attacks. Ever since, her mother Fatima has been glued to her computer, her last link to the daughter she brought up alone. She doesn't say much. We talk about this and that. Quite a lot about the daughter she had recently. Fatima is Moroccan and describes herself as a non-believer. Her daughter converted to Islam at 20. The room she grew up in bears testimony to a brutal upheaval. I can't bring myself to stay here long. It's horrible. Anissa had become a Salafist, a follower of the ultra-conservative form of Islam promoted by Saudi Arabia. It demands the full veil for women and strict gender segregation. She tore down the posters of her childhood idol, the pop singer Jennifer, and stopped listening to music. Even kissing on the cheek? In Islam, if a man and a woman are planning to get married, they're not allowed to kiss each other. I have to stop reading this, it's driving me mad. Anissa dreamed of a humanitarian mission to help her religious brothers dying in Syria. One Tuesday, she disappeared. Three days later, some friends knocked at her mother's door. On a Friday evening, two of Anissa's friends brought me a letter, her letter. That's when I understood what had happened. They made sure there wasn't a word. And no one picked up the phone. I'd been calling since Tuesday, but nobody answered. Not one of them picked up. They had to wait until she was in Syria. That was the agreement. Mum, sit down and read this carefully. Some people will tell you it's because of extremism, but believe me, nobody made me do this. I thought about it long and hard. If I'd told you, you'd never have let me go. I've decided to leave for Syria. It's peaceful here. Don't cry, I'm not dead. I'm just elsewhere, in the place where I can truly be happy. In time, you'll get over it. I love you, Anissa. She never asks me how I am. She knows the answer. Are you angry at her? No, I'll never be angry at her. I'm angry at the monsters she met. It's not her fault. 
Fatima blames some of Anita's acquaintances, people she accuses of indoctrinating her daughter. The path to extremism doesn't always begin on the internet. Sometimes it starts in real life. According to this confidential police report, Anissa came under the influence of a couple. We'll call them Rashid, an imam recently arrived from Spain, and his wife Mariam, a Salafist Frenchwoman. Anissa's two friends, the ones who delivered the letter, refused to speak on camera, but confirmed the pair had begun to exert a hold on her. Things changed after she met those people. They were nice, but the vicious circle started there. That's why it happened. Anissa was going through a bad period, as many people do in life. It's true, she needed to listen to the Quran, and he was there to recite it to her. I was there too, and there was nothing unusual about it. We failed to reach Rashid by phone, but find him in the car park outside the local mosque. We ask him about Anissa. I don't know her. You don't know her? She's called Anissa? Anissa. I don't know Anissa. Are you sure about that? Yet our sources tell us Rashid went to Anissa's house with his wife and a cousin from Spain who is looking to marry. His French becomes hesitant. This man offers help. <laughs> Your cousin was supposed to marry this girl? I don't have any cousins here, they're in Spain. Where is this cousin, in France? No, in Spain. He says his cousins are Spanish. My cousin has two children and a business. It's best if you go and see with him. Rashid's wife, Mariam, refuses to answer our questions. But Anissa's mother and grandmother say Mariam, Rashid and his Spanish cousin did visit their home. They sat there. He was here. The one who was supposed to marry Anissa. There was even his brother. I'd totally forgotten. And his wife Mariam was here. She was completely covered up. Could you see her face? Just the eyes. She could hardly eat. Mm. Rashid's a tyrant. My granddaughter never prayed in front of him. He ordered her to pray there. She prayed in front of me. I don't know what he did to influence her. He blinded her. She repeated everything he said. She was under his spell. He's what made her go crazy. The women say they vetoed the marriage, prompting an insulting call from Rashid. He asked me why I didn't pray and said my food wasn't halal. Why don't you pray? Your food is forbidden. Why does your daughter smoke? Why does your son smoke? He criticised all of us and if he says I'm lying, go and find him and we'll see. Our inquiries suggest the couple may have reinforced Anissa's increasingly conservative views, but nothing links them to her departure for Syria. A third person may have been involved, Anissa's best friend. We'll call her Yasmin. Suspected of having jihadist sympathies, could she have pushed her to leave? Before Anissa's departure, Yasmin wrote her this letter. May Allah congratulate you, Anissa. I thought I was crazy, unhappy in life. People see me as a foreigner, and I'm glad of it. Be a foreigner for your family. God will thank you. I'm proud of you.